Welcome back fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and I hope you're enjoying this tutorial series on how to make modular terrain tiles. We've made some nice looking hills and now we're going to move on to making some interesting terrain features and really the sky's the limit. Playing around with making some chasms now and um, probably if I would have done this again I think I would have cut this out before I'd mounted it on the board because that makes it a bit more difficult to get all the stuff out of here and I could have just cut through and then mounted it on the board. The next thing I'm going to do is um, get some slivers of foam and I'm going to stick these on the edge so they're sticking up a bit like that. Just use a little bit of white glue and of course I've got my big box full of bits so I can easily go in here and find little bits and stick them here and just tear them to size. There we go, I've put all these little bits of foam around the edge and roughly stuck them down with white glue. Um, I'll let that dry. And then it's time to go crazy with the gap filler. Here we go. You may need a couple of containers worth because, as you can see, you're going to use quite a lot of it. Now let's fast forward through the process of making a sunken road feature on one of the tiles. I've dug into the tile somewhat and then I'm using foam pieces to build up rocks and rocky monoliths framing it. I'm using some pins to keep the foam pieces in place while that PVA glue dries. It's just a matter of being creative and playing around with it until you get an interesting effect. For this particular tile I was inspired by some terrain that I saw online. Once I've arranged my foam it's time to get out the trusty gap filler and again start smoothing out the transition from the rocks to the flat surface of the tile. Once you've left the gap filler to dry, at least overnight, use some sandpaper to sand down the dry filler and smooth out the bumps. In this case I tried a bit of freeform sculpture to create a dramatic rock feature. This tile will always be a lone element on the edge of the board so it doesn't have to match up with other hills. I started using the hot wire foam cutter and then began sculpting with a knife. Now make sure you're very very careful when you use a knife in this way and always note where your fingers are and how much force you're applying to the blade. Here's the end result after adding some bark pieces and before smoothing things out with gap filler. Now it's time to texture. I've got some clay here from a nearby building site and I'm putting it through a fine sieve to get a nice fine grit I'll use as my basic texturing material. Then I put the original stuff through a sieve with larger holes and get a medium grade material. Here you can see the fine material, medium grade, and then the leftover rocks and clumps which can be used for larger rock features. To put it on the tile I use good old PVA glue mixed with a bit of water. Stir it up and then use an old brush to apply it to the tile. You can do this in sections or all at once depending on how much area you have to cover. Brush it on and then scatter the fine grade texturing material all over the tile. I started doing this lightly with a trowel but eventually I just poured it straight from the tub all over the tile in one go. Pat it down lightly a little bit and then pick up the tile and shake off the excess. Do all this texturing on some pieces of newspaper because you can pick up the paper after you've finished and pour all the spilled excess back into your container. Now of course there are other ways to texture your terrain, most notably with flock in which case you'd paint all your rock areas first before applying the flock. We may cover using flock in a later tutorial, but for the purposes of this tutorial I'm taking this approach. I also find it a bit harder wearing, and flock, even if you do varnish and seal it, does tend to flake off a little bit, whereas this is a lot tougher. You might have to retouch a few bald spots. Try and get a nice even coverage. Here's the finished tile with the first layer of texture on it. Here I'm texturing one of the hill sections. When you're brushing on the PVA glue, make sure you avoid the rock areas because they're obviously already textured naturally. Now it's time to add some medium grade texture to selected areas, the places where you'd expect larger rocks to have fallen and gathered, usually at the bases of cliffs. Here's my medium grade stuff and I'm just pouring that on the spots where I put glue. You can also add some patches on the flat areas to add some variation. I'm smoothing it down with a finger and blending it in a bit. Here I'm putting some medium texture on the road tile around the large rocks. Now I'm going to add some larger feature rocks 
And at this stage you can arrange them individually. This is some clay kitty litter that I also use for larger rocks. Again, be creative and just play with it, working up from the fine texture to the larger rocks. Don't overdo it though, just add a bit of contrast and variety to the texture. Having a look at pictures of real world rocks and cliffs online is also helpful for this stage, especially if you're going for realism. Here I'm adding yet more rocks to another hill section. I've decided to add a large rock on the top here, so I'm chopping out a bit of the foam and gluing a large rock from the garden here and adding some medium grade stuff around it. You could use some stronger glue to keep this in place. Finally, lightly dab some watered down PVA all over the areas where you've added the heavier texture to seal it. You don't really need to do this all over the fine grade texture because when you paint over it later that will seal it. But this extra layer of glue over the larger stuff and the rocks will give it an extra layer of protection and strength. And here they all are, all textured and ready to dry. I'll take these outside and dry them in the sun. Once they're completely dry, it will be ready for the painting stage. Woohoo! I can hardly wait. See you then.